Today, I'm gonna to be going through how you can reset and organize your life to have a nice fresh start going into 2021. A very common one is gonna to be to declutter your space. So this is gonna be your physical space, like your closet, go through what clothes you've actually been wearing, and maybe put aside all the clothes that you're not wearing and think about donating them if they no longer bring you any joy, as Marie Kondo would kind of say. Go into your drawers and see what's stuffed and packed at the back of the drawers. Just empty it all out and refold it back in and see, do you really need all of these pieces of clothing that are just kind of cluttering up your closet and your drawers? Once you've organized what clothes and items you actually want to keep in your physical space, you can do a nice deep clean. This is going to be cleaning the types of things that you don't usually clean, like wipe down all your windows, clean inside your shower, wipe down all the surfaces on top of your shelves. In your pantry, you know, go through it and see what you're actually going to use. All these foods, most of the time they do last, you know, different cans and soups and all that stuff, but if you're not going to use them, there are other people who might benefit more from them. You know, we went through my pantry because when I moved from university, I had so many cans because that's what I bought because I'm not really a chef. Um, but when I brought them home, to my family who, you know, we're lucky enough, my mom prepares dinner and meals for us. I'm not gonna be having canned soup as a snack. You know, I could have leftovers. So we went, got all the cans and donated them to our nearest food drive. Those people are gonna benefit from them way more than if they're just sitting in your pantry or going bad and expiring, you know what I mean? So go through that stuff and see you're gonna find stuff you didn't even know is back there. Now once you've taken care of this physical space, getting it all organized and clean, we're gonna move on to decluttering our online spaces. Now these days we're always on our phones and constantly using our computers and all these types of technology, but those can also be overcrowded with lots of information that we don't really need. Like, do you need these documents you, you know, made in first year university that you're never gonna look back on from your philosophy class? I don't think so. So take an hour, take a couple hours to go through your laptop and sit down and see, you know, what stuff, what files you actually need, what you don't need, trash them, then empty your trash, because that'll free up so much space on your laptop. Once you're finished files, you're gonna move on to your email list. This is like a pretty big deal for me. I, for some reason, subscribe to so many different emails. So that means I'm constantly getting a bunch of emails and I'm just there deleting them always, always deleting them because I don't care about the Bath and Body Works sale. Honestly, like I'm not really, I'm not seeing that I'm gonna go shop. So go through your email list, go and unsubscribe to all these email lists that you're not actually gonna use so that your email is kind of a less daunting place and there won't be as many incoming emails that you have to constantly check on the daily basis. Then moving on to social media. Go on to Instagram or whatever platform and I think it's really important that you unfollow or at least mute people who aren't adding anything into your life. If you're seeing their stories and kind of being like, ugh, or annoyed, or honestly people you don't really care to be updated on their life, like old, old people who I met like one time at a party, I'm not gonna see them around again, unfollow them. At least for me, I feel like it's unnecessary to be following them and seeing their journey. It's not adding anything to my life. Or if there's people who are constantly posting about things you don't really care for. For example, I was really, really into fitness for a while there, and I follow so many fitness influencers on YouTube and on Instagram who are just posting about their weight loss and their strength and all that stuff, which is so great for them. But for me, it doesn't bring me any joy. It kind of just reminds me that I stopped working out and I'm not getting stronger and I'm not losing weight and seeing all their healthy meals while I'm not eating healthy, it just doesn't bring me any happiness to see all that. So unfollow them, let them go. Moving on to YouTube, I honestly think I subscribe to like 500 people. I don't know if that's a lot or not, but a lot of the time I'll go into my subscriptions and there's just so many videos that I'm not interested in. I'm like, oh, I don't really care to watch that video. Okay, that's fine. But it seems that every upload from this person I'm not watching, I'll click their channel. I haven't watched anything for the last year. So it's kind of pointless that I'm still subscribing to them. So I go through and I unsubscribe. Now this does take a minute. Like all of these things, decluttering and you know, deleting all these emails and all that stuff, it takes time. So this is what we're making the time for before 2021, is to sit down. I went through and I was like, do I care about this person's YouTube videos anymore? Mm, no, unsubscribe. Am I gonna watch all these fitness videos anymore? No, I'm really not. I haven't for a year. I, no joy, I don't care about it anymore. So I go and I unsubscribe of all of those. I got my subscribers down to like around 200 when before I was following almost 500 people. Now before the new year starts, I think it's really important to just buckle down and do the things you've been putting off. Because when else are you going to do them? You're always busy, you know, you've always got stuff to do, there's always more important things to be doing, or you're always tired. 
you gotta just get it done. Now, the next thing on my list is to complete tasks you've been putting off. This kind of includes calling and making doctor's appointments or making a dentist appointment that you know you've been needing to make. This is kind of niche, but maybe there's like a plant that you've been meaning to repot or a piece of furniture you wanna move and kind of reorganize a room. This is the time to do it and then it'll all be nice and fresh and clean and it'll all be done moving into the new year. Finally, I know time moves by so, so quick and it just passes you by. It seems like the older I'm getting, the quicker the years are passing by and I'm like, what the heck? I felt like a year was so long when I was younger. I felt like I was in elementary school forever. You've heard it before and you probably feel it yourself. It went by so fast and it's like, what did I even do? Did I do anything? Like, what even happened? So I think it's really important, and I'm going to do this as well, to sit down and reflect on the past year. Not only the negatives, but also the positives. Write down the big life events that happened. You know, did your sister get married? Are you an aunt now? You know, like all of the events, don't let them pass by. Like write down and document. Write down all the big accomplishments that you did. And then next year you can look back and be like, wow, my goals are getting achieved. I'm checking stuff off of the list and I'm actually making progress. Even though it's kind of life gets fogged up with all of these other negative things that kind of take up our brain space. Think about what brought you joy this year. You know, was it your pet because they were always there for you and always there to cuddle you when, you know, we're all stuck inside not being able to see many people. After that, you can think about what you want to do differently this year. How you want to handle different situations differently if it wasn't as productive. And think about your upcoming goals for 2021. What you want to do. Do you want to be more positive? Show more gratitude to the people around you? Maybe take some more time for yourself. Have a personal day one time a week to you know, have some time off work and just focus on you and what you need and what your body really needs. Maybe you have long-term goals, but maybe there's also short-term goals. Because now I'm looking back at my year and what I had done, but all I can remember is like this past winter. I don't remember what I did in January, February, March. You know what I mean? So maybe set like time periods, you know, in the beginning of the year, I want to do this, but over the whole year, I want to focus on this and write it out, really write it out so you can go back and reflect and see if it actually got done. Just thinking about a goal in your head, for me, it's not enough to actually be able to get it done. It might be good for you, but I like to at least have it written down so I can refer back to it, you know, possibly make a plan to actually be able to get it done and the steps needed because otherwise, I'm really good at setting, you know, New Year's resolutions and making goals and then that's it. That's all I do. I just think of a goal. I'm like, oh, that would be nice. But I don't actually try to achieve it. And then I look back. I'm like, I didn't really do those things. Well, it's because I didn't really try or make an effort to do that. So I think that's really important. So those are a couple ways that you guys can prepare and reset for 2021. Wish you all the best. I hope you guys kind of got inspired and got a couple of ideas of, you know, some things you could be doing before the New Year comes. I'll see you guys in my next video.